Scott, this meeting is called to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business this evening, as always, is to approve minutes of previous meetings, starting with the February 13, 2012 work session. Uh, I make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Been moved by Mike and seconded by Charlie. All those in favor? Madam Chairman, before we vote on those, I have a recommendation. We are talking about the work session in non public. Right. On the second page. I believe it should read Chair Posen Scarborough moved to adjourn the non public work session. Seconded by Mr. Gotten. So move it by excuse me, amend it by adding uh, the phrases move to and non public. All those in favor of approving those minutes as amended by Ray? Aye. 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 Those minutes are approved. Next, we have the February 13, 2012 regular select board meeting. I have a motion to approve. Second. It's been moved by Dick, seconded by Ray. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. Announcements. The select board will meet on the following dates. Regular meetings at 6 p.m. on March 12, 2012 and March 26, 2012. Work review sessions prior to the regular meetings will start at 5 p.m. Town elections will be on March 13, 2012 at the Plymouth Elementary School from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Town meeting will be on March 17, that is on a Saturday this year, March 17, 2012, and that will be at the Plymouth Regional High School starting at 6 p.m. We will have a work session on March 19, 2012 at 5 p.m. All of the above meetings will be held in the town hall unless otherwise posted. Weather observations for the month of January are available in the town hall. We still need a citizen to represent the town of Plymouth on the Genesis Behavioral Health um, Board of Directors. Anyone wishing to volunteer for that, please contact the town hall. And citizens who wish to be listed on the selectmen's agenda should notify the town hall before 12 p.m. on the Friday before the scheduled meeting. So. This evening we have uh, quite a few milestones to mark, um, <coughs> the first of which is a presentation of a farewell plaque to departing police chief Steve Temperino. And tonight we congratulate Steve on his appointment as Assistant Director of Homeland Security for the state of New Hampshire, and we thank him for his many years of service to the town of Plymouth. He started as a police officer in 1987 and finished as chief. During his tenure, Steve's outstanding leadership, judgment, and strength of character earned the respect of all. He has consistently demonstrated his commitment to law enforcement and to the safety of Plymouth citizens. Steve effectively managed the police department's personnel, training, and budget, and he upgraded the conditions at the police station to improve saf safety habitability, workflow, and energy efficiency. He has been relentless in his pursuit of grants to improve police department op operations and to offset costs to the taxpayers. Chief Temperino's impact on the town of Plymouth will be long lasting, and while he will be missed here, we are confident <coughs> that he will succeed in his new position where will he will serve both our town and our state. Steve, to use a Marine Corps expression, we wish you fair winds and following seas. <laughs> you please come forward to receive the flag.
Sí. And we now move on to appointments. Part of Steve Temperino's legacy to the Plymouth Police Department is a well-trained and prepared organization whose members are ready to step up and take charge. Steve Lefebvre is a leader, manager, and law enforcement professional in whom we place our complete trust and confidence to carry out the duties of Plymouth Police Chief. We are now pleased to invite him to come forward to be sworn in. Where's Carol? Right here and repeat after me. I, Stephen M. LaFay, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully and, impartially, and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as chief of police. According to the best of my abilities, to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. And to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Chief Lefebvre. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you very much. I also would like to thank everybody in the community for 18 years. You've always supported me, and you've made it a really great place to work. Because of that, you've really given me one of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten, and that is a job that I absolutely love. Okay? And I hope each and every one of you can experience that someday you wake up in the morning, you go to work to, uh, to a job that you really enjoy. I enjoy that. Thank you very much, and I look forward to serving you as your chief of police. Before we leave the um, police department as the topic of discussion for the evening, uh, I'd like to make another couple of announcements. Sergeant Alex Hutchins is a number mem mem another member of our police department who is well known and respected for his dedication and professionalism. He is also a Plymouth native, and it is our pleasure to announce tonight that he is 
effective today, appointed interim captain of the Plymouth Police Department with an anticipated swearing in at our March 12th select board meeting. So congratulations, Captain Hutchins. And finally, um, Matt McCarthy has been serving with distinction as detective in the Plymouth Police Department, and we are pleased to announce his promotion to interim detective sergeant, also effective today, with a swearing in on March 12th. So congratulations also to Sergeant Matt McCarthy. that, we are moving on on the agenda to new purchase orders. <laughs> and for those who came for the farewell and swearing in, um, please don't feel that you need to remain <laughs> at the meeting, <laughs> the regular business meeting. Oh, I cleared them out. <laughs> <laughs> purchase order that we have in our folders is North Country Council annual dues in the amount of $4,439.52. We had voted at a previous meeting that we were, would renew our involvement with North Country Council. Reflecting back on that discussion, I recommend that we approve the purchase order for the $4,439.52 with the understanding that it's for a one-year period in which we will be reviewing the value that we receive from the organization. Uh, I will second it. All right. It's been moved by Ray, seconded by Mike. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Purchase order is approved. Committee reports. Charlie? Um, no, I have nothing to report. Ray? Um, on the uh, Plymouth Regional Chamber of Commerce, just a heads up that the Young Professionals Group that the Chamber supports is meeting this Wednesday night at Biederman's in which they will be receiving a presentation from Mark Scarano, the Executive Director of the Grafton County Economic Development Council on the um, unfolding Plymouth um, Business Enterprise Center um, down there on Main Street. Um, one of the features that the Young Professionals Group is now using is to actually have speakers that they invite in 
in an order to try to drive up participation levels. They've had good, good sessions in the past, and the most successful ones have always had a speaker. The, uh, the other thing is uh, Charlie and I did have an opportunity to attend um, a, an event that kind of spins off of uh, the work that goes on with the Plymouth Energy Commission um, this past uh, Thursday, excuse me, Wednesday evening, there was an open house downtown um, on Main Street at the, I always forget the Pemmy, point. Pemmy Valley Laundry. Thank you. Pemmy Valley <coughs> Laundry as a result of the work that came out of a pairing of the Better Buildings Project and also paired with an energy sufficient, excuse me, very energy efficient proposal that went in the use of solar hot water and they did an open house and walked us through that and it was impressive to see the, uh, the level of work that went into that and the fact that they can recognize less than a five year payback. Um, and it only cost them about $10,000 as a result of grants and other opportunities that they would uh, take advantage of. So a forty to $50,000 proposal actually ended up costing them $10,000 and a five year payback. So it was nice to see that. I haven't had a chance to get to any of these other open houses. And it's good to see that the Better Buildings Project is actually producing real results. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, uh, Perry said that uh, it was the largest system, I think, in New Hampshire at this point. There was 42,000. They had subsidies that brought it down to 19, I think, and then loan, the, the difference in the, between the cost of the loan and the cost of the energy pays it off, you know, out of pocket, four and a half years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I attended the Plymouth Energy Commission meeting, which I guess was shortly after that yes, open house, Wednesday, also Wednesday evening, at which the primary topic of discussion was the uh, petition warrant article concerning the proposed local self-determination ordinance and Peter Martin came in and presented his um, case really about that proposed ordinance so uh, this is one thing people I guess should be looking for is that there is going to be this petition warrant article which you might want to make a point of taking a look at before town meeting if you can. Peter also, by the way, pointed out that, or mentioned that they are going to be passing out copies of the, the ordinance that's being covered by this petition warrant article at the polls on voting day. So on your way out of the poll, you may be getting a copy of this ordinance, which you can take a look at. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's plenty board meeting, uh, a couple of minor sort of, uh, subdivisions, lot line adjustments. And then there was also a fairly lengthy discussion on the continuing saga of the drainage up at the Mountain View, um, the state's subdivision off of Fairground Road and the impacts on um, some of the other streets off of Fairgrounds Page, et cetera. Um, there was also just a very quick site visit um, out there Sunday before last uh, where we met with some of the residents and kind of walked some of the area again kind of as a refresher for many folks who have been out there on many uh, many occasions I would say probably um, so we are continuing to look at that issue and try to resolve it as best we can or at least learn more information and I attended a campus community council meeting and there was not a whole lot of uh, controversy. The one thing that did come up was that people expressed concern that they weren't aware of when those meetings were being held. So I think that we will try to do a better job of, I'll certainly try to do a better job of announcing those for the town residents. And um, we can also start posting that schedule on the town website as well so that people will be aware if they have concerns about things happening with the campus, they'll be able to come and express them. And that was all I had. Under other business, we have brought and select board perambulation of town lines. Paul, is that, is there somebody here? We are, yes. Would you like to come forward and? I don't know how you people hold me to see, but. Yeah. <laughs> if you, you want. want or? Um, no, you can pull chairs up to the okay. table. I'm 
I'm Miles Sinclair. He must be, you know, really, really sick for him not to come. He's quite the trooper. Okay. So. You don't know, well, I don't know what you're here for. So you're going to have to tell us. Well, there's a statute that requires perambulation of town lines every seven years. And um, as we understand it, there's many municip municipalities that do not follow that, um, including the town of Groton. What we have done most recently is the Groton Plymouth line. And it was professionally done. We brought our copy of the line. I'm sure that you guys have one as well. Um, but we're looking to more closely adhere to the statutory requirements. And um, we're a fairly young board. Uh, Kyle and I have both been on for about three years now, and we're senior members. And uh, looking to, you know, we did create a um, perambulation non-capital reserve fund about three years ago, and uh, had put away $5,000 then. We're presenting that same issue to the people again this year uh, for additional funds. Um, Speaking for myself, and I think Kyle feels similarly, um, we would like to be able to have redo all, all our town lines with GPS points so that in the future would the Board of Selectmen or our volunteers be so inclined that uh, it would not necessarily have to be professionally. We could just go out using GPS points, have a nice walk through the woods, and just verify the boundaries, which as we understand it is the purpose. Um, I don't know how much information you folks have on the Plymouth Groton line itself, but again, it was last done in 1998, and um, the firm that did this, just reviewing this briefly in preparation for tonight's meeting, they wound up finding a discrepancy between the historical boundaries, the monuments as I understand it, and um, the lines that they were doing or finding at the time, and there was actually House Bill 1119 that was passed to adjust that, and it was ratified by both towns. Um, with the two-thirds majority required. So there was an adjustment to that line as recently as 1998. So um, there's just a multitude of reasons why you want to keep these current, just so there's an understanding between the municipalities of where the boundaries lie to avoid any future disputes. If you don't perambulate, then at some point you're running the risk of having an issue, which will then be litigated, costing who knows how much money. And uh, just one of the things that I have been reading since I was on the board, there was a survey done, I believe, if I'm recalling this correctly, where a certain municipality wanted basically to abolish the statute and no longer have this requirement, lo and behold, to find themselves just a very short time later in a boundary dispute with a boarding, bordering municipality. So um, we're looking to just become more current and um, feel that it's, it's certainly important to do and it's been neglected, we're looking to correct that. And we just, pursuant to the statute, um, made the request to, to do this one first and forwarded that to your office. Mm -hmm. And I guess our administrative assistants had corresponded, and we're looking to just set up this first meeting to, I guess, decide how to proceed. And that's why we're here. <coughs> yes, please. W was there, were there any discrepancies discovered in this survey? In this most recent one, yes, that's the one I was talking about. It required an act of the legislature and votes by both towns. Oh, this is the 98 one. This is, oh, this this is, is the most recent <coughs> town of has done. I don't know if you've done others more recently, but you haven't done this yourself since 1998. And like I said, by statute, it's required every seven years. Can I see that? Just sure. Yeah. Okay. It's actually, it's got a lot of historical data in there, copies of old minutes and things, and it's got photographs of the monuments. We're actually dealing with four physical monuments in the woods, and the line we have is pretty much shaped like that. How long is the boundary between Plymouth and Groton? You know, in total, I just did some quick math. It's a little over 16,000 feet, which is three miles or so. I guess. Yeah. Is there any reason to believe that there's anything wrong with the monuments that are there? Do you have any s suspicions about? A problem with the Groton Rumney line? We don't know of any. Um, it's a, an area that's been heavily logged through the years. Um, one of the monuments doesn't look like it rises very far off the ground and it looks just like a, a small pile of stones. 
Others are certainly more distinct. When they did do this, they blazed them in red paint, which makes them pretty apparent. I, I don't know how long the paint lasts, but and there is a certain area, just again reviewing that briefly, that sounds like it's, it's fairly steep and a little, it presents some challenges trying to traverse it. But I'm certainly up for the challenge. And He's a few years younger than me, so I wonder what through the woods to do it. Are, are you thinking of taking a run through the woods yourself to see if you can locate the monuments? Uh, not tomorrow, but <laughs> <laughs> when all the stuff melts. Oh, yeah, we have to wrap the line. Officially do it, yes. Yeah. Officially do it. Both boards have to walk simultaneously. Or appoint someone else the to do it. Yeah. Board? Yes. You're going to get me up there? <laughs> Well, no, you have the option no. to have it done professionally if you choose. No, but I mean, you're not going to get me walking around out of the woods. Yes, right. <laughs> when that study was done, were there GPS locations um, provided yes. for the monuments? Yes. Well, with today's technology, Charlie, that'd be a nice little jaw in the spring. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about those steep inclines and things. What is that, a cliff or something? Yeah. Well, it just... It, what I read, and I didn't read the, through the whole binder tonight, but uh, it did say that there was a certain section when they were trying to, to blaze the line, because luckily there's only four points. It's not, it doesn't zigzag through the woods. Trying to stay on the line because of the terrain, they had a little bit of difficulty doing that. Was this done by a survey or? I mean, it was a combination of people, um, some professionals, and it, it did involve two local surveyors. Alan Barnard was one, and there was a, a second name that I don't recall at the moment. They just put up monuments, not, they don't have iron pipes or stakes like. Well, there is an iron pipe in the, the first monument, mm -hmm. um, the Romney Plymouth Rotten Line, but that's located within a pile of stones. And one of the things they actually did is um, they created holes, like pinpoint locations within these monuments to like zero in where exactly it is. And I guess that's something surveyors do. I know when they did a personal, my own property. I don't know if they drill it or chisel it or what, but they put a hole in a stone so that if they have to come back and, and redo it, that's you know one of the reference points. Right. So they'll call it a drill hole in a rock or something like um, that. I can probably give you the language if you give me a second because yeah. I've been looking at that for a moment. Yes, Ray. Um, Paul, do we have similar information that he's referring to in our archives? Mm -hmm. You should have this exact binder. Mm -hmm. We've tried doing this with all the surrounding towns, and I've been turning it out every time in the past. Really? Yep. Even at the last time that it was done in the 90s with each town. What I think significant has moved the boundaries with the GPS points. And the fact that they had GPS points, they felt that GPS points don't move even if the markers do. That's true. Well, and my guess about that statute is it dates from a long, long time ago, probably before there was much fancy survey work being done and no GPS points. So I would think that, that probably the permanency or the, and the accuracy of the lines that, were, that was cr created in 98 was much better than it was in, say, 1784 when they had a, you know, a chain. Mm -hmm. Um, to drag through the woods. So I'm kind of wondering how relevant this requirement of doing it every seven years is given today's technology, which isn't to say it should be neglected. I'm just wondering um, if, if it really um, seems to me you ought to be able to survey something and leave it alone, you know, pretty much. It is initially an ancient statute, but like I said, as recently as 1998, there was a problem with yeah. the references they've been using. If you lose these boundaries for whatever reason, I don't, I'm, and I'm not looking to throw logging under the bus, but I'm very active with the Hardy County Snowmobile Club, and they don't always, they're not always as gentle mm -hmm. as to be delicate as they perhaps could be in the woods. And actually, we have the uh, Kimball Hill Cemetery up in uh, North Groton where a logging operation created some damage. And some of these boundaries aren't going to be that visible. And if they're not being cautious, they may destroy the boundary. And could you go and then recreate? <coughs> yeah, I guess you could with GPS points.
but you still have to reestablish the balance. So you're talking about the type of situation where somebody cuts down all the marked trees, for example, something like that? Well, or depending some, but more critical than the marked trees, which can die and just fall on their own, yeah. are the physical granite monuments. Yeah, actually moving. I mean, you do see uh, landowners from time to time moving things they shouldn't move. Right. Let me see the book. This is actually, this is a copy of the house bill, and it does talk about um, a, a blazed and spotted line of trees to a drilled hole set in a stone monument. And it actually gives you know, the degrees, compass directions, number of feet, and it's 16,267 feet. Yes, in what, what was the nature of the dispute that needed to be resolved? I mean, what was it between? Between the towns or between property owners or? There was something, <coughs> and that's it right here. Uh, it was the original town line. It was a USGS quad sheet is what it talks about. Right here. And actually our ta tax map needs to be revised because it shows the old boundary. And it looks to me like you guys got more land than Groton did out of that adjustment. <laughs> but I mean, but what was the, did the dispute come to the surface because of because when, of this. Well, because of one town disagreeing with the other town or a property owner disagreeing with another property owner? It came about because they perambulated the town line in 1998. And that's when they discovered the discrepancy. Uh, okay. I see, okay. okay. New technology okay. Dick, just led to yeah. a, a more accurate finding. Right. I mean, I, uh, if I just... Go ahead. I, I, I'm in complete agreement with Mike, and I've had the same issue in Franklin. It's an old statute, and I think with today's technology, you know, if I could, if I could write the law that I would like to see written, I would say, you disband it in five years, and every town needs to do a GPS. And after you do the GPS, you forget about it. You got the disc, you put it in the safe somewhere, and you're done. Yeah. We've been doing this every seven years for thousands of miles over the course of the state of New Hampshire. It seems kind of crazy in this technology-driven. Day we live in, <clears throat> and also to add on to what Dick said, any new construction that anybody, including ourselves, would do along any of those boundary lines would have to be resurveyed again, despite any new uh, going out and walking the boundary. <coughs> You'd still have to have it surveyed again. And I like the question: Do you have all the new surveys that Crot and Wind Farm? did along the Plymouth Groton boundary lines? Is that within all the... Do you have all that new information? Mm -hmm. They gave us binders upon binders of information. <laughs> I mean, we can find the answer to that question. It'd be interesting to check that all check the way is inside <laughs> seven years sur surveys that, uh, that they were required to do. Despite well, I know that they surveyed the property <coughs> that they're using, but all of that is in Groton. I don't know as it borders the Plymouth boundary at all. Uh, it's all already borders the Plymouth boundary. Yeah, it's it's on the line itself. Yeah. Right, but they but, we, but we, we challenged whether all of the windmills were actually going to be in Groton, and they did surveys they to, surveyed the to, line, to yeah. demonstrate that, the, that all of the sites that they had located were on the Groton side of the line. And so they did communicate that to us as well, that it was all within the town of Rotten. I think they were also, is that the issue I was bringing up? <coughs> this boundary issue? That showed up on one of the maps we were looking at, that they had addressed? But as far as, you know, there's no question the whole wind farm is within the town of Rotten, so, pursuant to that adjustment. So the only issue would be if, that I can say, if there's no access roads in, on this near this boundary line, are there? I mean, where you have construction going on, new housing, or just logging. It's, just you're out in the woods. The majority of it appears to be that. But just quick so reference to um, our current tax map. It looks like you have some, <coughs> some easier road access. It looks like it's some of the roads off the Tenney Mountain, mm -hmm. and the resort there to get very close to one of the boundaries. How accurate that is, I can't say. Again, tax maps aren't really supposed to be that accurate for that, that type of purpose. But the only issue would be the Groton Wind Farm. I mean, at this point in time, that'd be the only concern I, that you would have or we would have is, is where the 
That's not why they're we're not, doing this. That's not why. Not at all. Because we started this. It was, I think it was in my first year on the board, and Rotten Wynn hadn't even approached us at that time when we created that uh, well, regulation non-capital reserve fund. So we're looking to do this strictly pursuant to the statute, and the only reason we didn't have um, <coughs> more articles for for people to consider putting additional monies in that is because of the state of the economy the last two years. Go ahead, Bray. Um, uh, first, an observation. I'm of a similar view as uh, both Mike and Dick and um, Paul. With the current technology and with the understanding that I've heard here tonight that all of the, uh, I'll call them points of inflection, on the town lines have been marked with GPS locations and with today's technology, it just seems to me that the, uh, unless there's a penalty in the statute. There is. What's the penalty for non-compliance with the statute? Are you their legal representative? Is that why you're here? No. I'm, I'm the town administrator now. I'm not the legal representative. $5. $5. Five dollar fine. I, I know there is a penalty. I'm, I'm not saying that's funny, say but I know there is a statutory penalty. <coughs> I, I believe it is five dollars. With, with, uh, with that in mind, um, unless there's a sense of need to actually uh, find the monuments in the field, to me that's the only work that would be needed to be done, if any. Yeah. would be just to locate the, especially when you look at the configuration of the boundaries between our two towns, they're straight lines, right. except for that one jag. And with GPS equipment, I'm in the same line as, as, as Mike is fast. I, I agree. You know, GPS points don't, don't move. They... If we're confident that that report in 1998 gets it done between the two towns, just verify the monuments are in the field, if anything. <coughs> Well, and I, I think maybe the other, th I mean, I'm not sure exactly what constitutes a perambulation, but I think it just means walk the boundary, doesn't it? Yes. Basically Essentially verify them. So, I mean, worst case scenario, maybe we would want to, maybe Charlie and somebody from your board. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Could, with the black flies and the mosquitoes and all that, walk the line. Mr. Miller. The purpose and the intent of this law, or this RSA, is to maintain the values of properties. And while the technology uh, is the GPS to be able to quickly find the reference points, which are called monuments, something that's placed in the ground, um, the value of the properties is being able to, the average person, to be able to determine their location of their boundary lines. 1982, the law changed uh, from properties being surveyed to be more or less and had to be computed to contain the exact number of acres. And of course, that came along with the, the technology. Uh, another piece is uh, seven years for towns to preamble alignments, every 10 years for private citizens to verify and validate their bounds. Also, there was part of trying to get rid of one law. Uh, there are other laws associated with this, one being any tree that is spotted, which means it's been blazed by a surveyor on the line, can only be cut by agreement between the two parties. If there's a disagreement, then the judge may determine if that tree gets cut. The, the emphasis on these preambles and maintaining these monuments and the lines is uh, to maintain the values of our property and our ability to quickly, uh, visually see where those lines are located. And of course, the fee was five dollars, but it's an 1884 uh, law. And if not uh, older, uh, so uh, that's you know. It is kind of comical in a sense that people pick up a pin thinking, well, I'm just going to move this over 15 feet and get just a little bit more acreage, when that pin monument only represents where the line is. So a surveyor is going to come back out and find that the pin's missing and replace the pin. But the fact is, when the average uh, abutter or homeowner, landowner, is going to go out in the woods, 
very few people have the GPS technology that's for surveying to be able to find that. So what's the purpose and the value of monuments and the preamble in uh, seven years by towns and ten years by individuals? Okay. I don't think it hurts for us to, I would like to make a motion, I guess, that we pull out our 1998 thing, uh, our perambulation, if that's what we call it, uh, and take a look at it mm -hmm. and discuss this further at a, at a meeting after we've had an opportunity to do that. Yeah. I'll second that. All right, it's been seconded. Yeah, motion moved by Mike and seconded by Ray. Those in favor? Aye. 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 So should we then wait for word from you folks? Or? Yeah. yeah, I think that would be yes, good. I mean, um, we do need a chance to take a look at that and and just go back to it and review it. Because um, we didn't. When did we first contact the minister? November. We let you guys know what our purpose was. At least let her know that it took us Okay. Is that land logged now or is it out in the middle of some of it's logged, Charlie. A lot of it is, yeah. 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 A lot of it's green acre woodlands. Green acre woodlands, I was just gonna say that. Uh, yes, Paul. Could I ask how much money you have in capital right now to do this? And the fund itself is a little over five thousand dollars. With we have to start saving. Yeah. The expectation that we would uh the, the town's people approve it, we'd have at least 10 grand at the town meeting. You say you have a cost estimate? I, I'm not sure what the estimate is. Like I said, I mean, ideally, we would like to just be able to verify them. There's four boundaries, not do it professionally. Um, that's at least the majority of our board is willing to do that. We didn't know what your um, intent would be. How many miles of boundary do you have? With total? Yeah. I haven't added that up. I mean, I just came here to address this. How many times? We have five of them in right? Five of them in Yeah. <coughs> and none of them have been prior to made for It's even older than this. Yes. Yeah. Plymouth, Dorchester, Alexandria, Orange. Hebron, Romney. Oh, okay. Can, can I just ask one question? Are you appropriating these funds in the anticipation that you would then be hiring a surveyor to assist you or just in the event it became necessary we just wanted to have the funds I our intent would hopefully because I just have a, a very strong interest in history and I just think it would be fascinating to go verify these as a matter of fact I have located um, like I said I'm active with a snowmobile club um, Hardy Country and there's a boundary that's very close to one of our snowmobile trails I'd heard about this they talk about the three corners it's Hebron, Groton, and Alexandria. And it just happens to be um, just beyond the power lines, um, just off our snowmobile trail. And I went, and it's very visible. And it's a yellow pipe sticking out of a stone that's a flat piece of granite, pretty much square, on the ground. And one of the things that you see in these pictures here, they used to, whether they chiseled it or what they did, they would etch in the year yeah. that they did the perambulation. And on this stone I was looking at, there were multiple, multiple years that they had done this. And, you know, just the brief time that I spent looking at it, majority of them were in the 1800s, where they actually etched the year into the stone. Interesting. Interesting. Pretty fascinating. So, but, and correct me if I'm not speaking for you as well, Kyle, but if we were going to do this, from my perspective, and hopefully you would agree, I'm looking to do it the right way, the right way the statute requires. Um, I'm not looking to do this and any other man and then pursuant to what we're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, I, I want to just go through the motions and just be reckless. Either we're going to do it right, or from my perspective, we'll just do it on our own if you people don't want to do it. Well, so, I I just mean, is that pretty accurate, Kyle? Yeah. Again, I think we need some time to review that and discuss amongst ourselves, um, you know, if we think it's a wise idea, and if so, you know, who we might enlist to assist us with it because um, I think that both the, the amount of time and the level of um, physical requirement that it imposes is, is pretty demanding knowing that the terrain up there. 
so. Time frame for when we want to hear from you? No. Oh. I guess 40. Mm -hmm. three, three meetings, 45 yeah, days. I think we'll, we'll need to take time to look at that. So our next meeting is the 12th of March, I'd say, by the 20th, after our, we probably will discuss it by our March 27th meeting. Okay. Just so we have some idea. Well, and I don't think anybody's going to get up in those woods with the snow on the hill anyway, so. Mm -hmm. There is any wood snow. Oh, there is. There I'm is. Sure. How is snowmobiling this year? Uh, it's been one of the worst years. So. Yeah. We had, a, we had a, one of our machines out just put up a sign to walk a trail because the construction of the wind farm went out yesterday. But other than that, we haven't had the machines out on the trails. It just hasn't been enough snow. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. too bad. But they say something's coming Wednesday into Thursday, so who knows? <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Well, thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Did that you say? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unfinished business. Is there any public comment? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just asked if there is any public comment. And well, I might make a statement. All right, Mr. Wood. Uh, is the board all knowledgeable about the uh, unified basketball game that is now going on in the state? Well, actually, uh, I'm sure we should have physical performance. No. There's about, there's about 30 teams in the state, and Plymouth is one of the top teams, and I think it would be good that if the captains or, and the coaches came in before the board and we did something, you know, okay, this, this is really taken off and it's really a great thing for the kids. And if you went to see one of the games, <coughs> The gym is full of people. You don't even get that much for the work of the dog game. helping the kids. And they have, afterwards they eat all these together and everything else. And if you could see the looks on their faces, how much they enjoy it, you, you would really be amazed. I didn't know if you knew anything about it. But it just, uh, it might, now that, now Philippine is going into the playoff state, uh, on the state level. So if they do something in the states, or even if they don't, you might want to do something. Just call them in and recognize them and congratulate. Uh, so you know, it's just in the planning stages now in my mind. But yep. I'm going to try and get a dinner done with the senior thing. Uh, because this kids, are, it really makes a difference. I can't believe it until you see it. So you're going to see it. No, what's the name of the league, John? I think that's a great idea, yes. definitely. So, yeah, let's work on that, definitely. Thank you, John, that's a great idea. Anybody else? Right. Is there any further business? I move to Second. It's been moved by Ray and seconded by Mike. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.